Welcome to the gastropod video. Uh, we're going to be talking about the um, well, essentially what are you know as snails. The gastropods are snails. Gastro, they crawl along on uh, what would be a stomach, okay, for us. But stomach, foot, okay, Ga stomach, foot is gastropods. Uh, pod, you know, as like a podiatrist, so you know that root word and you know gastro from other phyla. We're going to be looking at the prosobranchs, which are your classic snails um, or marine snails. Okay, and things like abalone, like pawa, and limpets. Then we've got the opistobranchs, which are the nudibranchs, t things that tend to not have shells. And then finally the pulmonates, which are air-breathing snails. The only the land snails, the ones, the only one that we um, are concerned with in the marine environment is amphibola to cronata, the mud snail. Okay, most all gastropods have shells. And this is a very old gastropod, which is has what's called a plano spiral shell. It's all in one flat plane, and it spirals around on itself. Okay, and in a flat plane. And this is essentially uh, a limpet that has been elongated, and so that gives a place for the body of the animal to retreat and be protected from predators. With modern snails we see this you can see the bilateral symmetry here and a non plano spiral shell where it goes up and in this case we spiral around onto ourself uh, but at a asymmetrical in an asymmetrical pattern and what this allows it to do is give a geometry that uh, allows the animal to get larger but also um, use the old structure here in order to um, uh, make itself stronger and more crush resistant. Okay. That's called torsion. Um, and you'll see the shell positioned across the body to balance the center of the gravity so it goes across the body as we saw in the last image. Um, and most of them have an operculum So here's the operculum. Uh, let's get my little, little pointer up, and there we go. So most of them will have a, a, an, a operculum attached to the muscular foot that they can withdraw into the aperture or the opening of the shell, and uh, it's essentially a trap door that protects them. It's the cat's eye in, in a cat's eye shell that uh, protects the animal from anything that might um, want to be able to get into the hole of the of the snail shell. So let's have a look at parts of the, the shell. The aperture is the opening. The columella is the central spine. Okay, and that's very strong. Um, the whorl, one whorl is essentially one trip around the the body of the of the the shell so one spiral around is one whorl the apex is the top the very top point okay the spire is the height uh, the spire is all of the shell from the first time that it gets makes one transit around the shell all the way to the the rest of the way up to the top of the um, shell to the apex. Okay, you have a siphonal canal, which is here, and you'll notice that not all um, animals, not all mollusks or seashells have a siphonal canal. Some are just round openings. The ones that do have siphonal canals are predators or um, or scavengers, and the ones that don't are grazers. We'll talk about that, why that is in a little bit. Okay, the inner lip is the inner part of the, the shell, or the aperture. The outer lip um, is the outer part of the aperture. Okay, so we're going to talk about two different subclasses of the prosobranchs, which are snails, essentially. Okay, we've got the 
archaeogastropods, archaeo being old, okay, and neo, which is new, gastropods, which are snails with siphons, okay. So let's have a look at how these things differ. Uh, here's an archaeogastropod. You can see the slit. It's a slit shell uh, right there, uh, feeding on a, on a sponge deep water. Uh, here are the slit shells again. Here is another type of archaeogastropod, an old type of um, shell. This is a pala. Here's a limpet, which is an archaeogastropod. Here's one that is a um, top shell that is on a um, coral. And one thing that you might have noticed about they, those is they all are on hard substrates, okay? And they are usually grazers, okay? And one of the reasons that they're restricted to hard substrates is because their gill looks a bit like this. It looks kind of like a feather, all right? So, and that is called a bipectinate gill because it has change our color up here okay it has one side and another side to the gill it's very much like a feather it's uh, by means two a monopectinate gill which we'll see a little bit later means that um, it has one side now the reason that's important is because these bipectinate gills uh, traveling across um, sediment are very susceptible to damage by that uh, fine sediment and so these things are restricted to hard uh, substrates okay and here's the monopec or the bipectinate gill okay mouth muscular foot the mantle goes along the edge of the shell okay so this is your typical um what would it be it'd be a uh, limpet um, and you can see that it looks almost exactly like the the um, chitin, right? It's almost exactly like the chitin, except it has one shell instead of eight. But from the bottom, they look almost exactly the same. Okay. Um, reproduction, they don't copulate. They um, lay eggs, but they are um, externally fertilized. And then they... Um, settle and so the let's go on to the neo gastropods the new gastropods they have uh, a couple of different things that allow them to um, uh, exploit soft sediments which uh, most of the ocean is okay probably 95 percent of the ocean surface is going to be soft sediment that's going to be depositional and so they've got one thing called a monopectinate gill and another thing called a siphon. Okay, so the monopectinate gill we've already looked at. Here is the siphon. It's a fold in the mantle tissue, much like if you can roll your tongue, uh, then you will know how, how this kind of thing works. And so this is, um, they can suck, they can suck fluid in through that little rolled uh, siphon. The siphon comes out this siphonal canal, this siphonal notch coming out of the shell, and that siphon allows them to smell their way, much like a hound dog or something, towards their food. And so these things tend to be predators or um, uh, scavengers. And if you look at um, some of the like purple mouth whelks in an estuary, you can see these siphons. Uh, sort of waving back and forth as they smell their way towards uh, wherever they're going. And again, we can see the operculum hooked to the back of the muscular foot, which is its trap door. Okay, so we've talked about the monopectinate gill, which um, enabled the, them to radiate out into their into um, soft sediments from rocky habitats. And so this uh, opened up massive amounts of territory for um, uh, for exploration for ha in 
uh, for habitation and they diversified largely. Okay, so siphonal canals, as we talked about, they can be very big. All right, this is one of our pinion whelks from locally, and this is a uh, murex. All right, the difference between the archaeogastropods and the neogastropods is most of these uh, copulate uh, with internal fertilization, and then they lay eggs, and you'll often find um, whelk eggs uh, deposited in it with little envelopes, little cases. All right, moving on to the opistobranchs, the subclass opistobranchs. All right, <clears throat> they are the bubble snails, sea hares, nudibranchs, and sea slugs. So some of them have a shell, but most of the, mostly they don't. And in, in the um, bubble sh snails, the shell is very uh, um, small and not very well developed. Okay, and they also have a second pair of tentacles called the rhinophores, which we'll see in a second. All right, so these things tend to be grazers, but grazers on other animals, so uh, sedentary animals. So here is a bubble snail, okay, and uh, here's its shell, which is um, semi-internal, and it is not very well developed. Here is a sea hare, okay, these are like giant nudibranchs, uh, or like, they look a bit like those, um, uh, those black uh, giant um, shell, uh, shield shells that we see, and uh, which is a type of limpet, but these things have no shell and they can um, give off this uh, noxious, uh, it's like an ink as if, they've, if they're disturbed. Fairly rare, but um, uh, seen around things like mussel farms. And here's our lovely little nudibranch with its gills coming up off of the uh, top. And it's rhinophores, second uh, pairs of antennas called rhinophores. Let's have a look at the rhinophores. All right, so on this side, we see something we'll be a little more familiar with, which is a luna moth with its big antennas. And we know those are used um, to smell their way towards mates. Now the rhinophores on gastropods are exactly the same thing. They're sensory capability. You can see lots of surface area and um, that gives them a lot of ability to smell their way around the, their environment. Okay, they don't have uh, uh, internal gills rigid, generally they have either the gills that stick up like we saw before which are retractable or these things called serrata and here is the other type of frilly nudibranch that you see and the serrata which project out all over the all over the, um, the the outside of the body or you might have the gills but here you see the mantle uh, covering the muscular foot down here underneath, and the visceral mass will be sandwiched in between. Um, okay, so these ones do copulate, as we said before, and um, you can see egg, the eggs of nudibranchs quite often. They sort of look like a little rose. But you look very closely, you'll see the individual eggs. Okay. Uh, and then finally, we have the pulmonata, which is the last uh, subclass that we're going to look at. These are air-breathing snails, and they have no gill, but inside the mantle, the mantle is very highly vascularized, and it um, essentially acts like a, a gill. Well, it's, like a, it's actually called a lung. It's a very vascularized surface, and the only um, pulmonate snail in New Zealand in the um, marine environment is Amphibola cronata, the mud snail. And finally, with gastropods, um, we look at the feeding. They pretty much all have a radula, as we've um, talked about in the overview video. Uh, they have this thing called the odontophore, which is a essentially what the radula 
uh, it's a hard backing for the radula so that it, it helps press the radula down on whatever it, um, whatever it is scraping. Okay. And uh, so they, they, they're like chipmunk teeth where they're, uh, the worn teeth are continuously replaced and new teeth are made at the front of the, of the radula. So that's it for the gastropods. We'll see you in the next mollusk video.